Welcome! It's the showdown hoedown, you mother father. How you doing? I'm the Degenerate75. I'm a high limit DFS player who is helping you try not to suck so bad at this, because if you don't know, this shit be tough. And this is the showdown hoedown, which is kind of the, you know, the whole foundation of my brand, where we focus on showdown. It started with golf, and I realized, hey, this shit transitions over very well to football. So we're going to be looking at Monday Night Football Slate tonight, trying to help you uh, help you out with a little bit of strategy, not just simply picks. If you want picks, go to the Tout site or uh, some other slappies on YouTube. That'd be my advice to you. Here's my schedule. The big guy stays very busy. If you like the cut of my jib, you can uh, come check out my content all the time. I do college football. I do PGA, but most importantly, I do NFL. That's why you're here. We always start in the first place. You should always start contest selection. This is where you're burning your money. If you watch this every week, you're thinking, man, you, you talk about contest selection every week. Yeah, it's the most important thing, you idiot. Okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be calling names. It's just some people don't like that I do contest selection. So I'm going to keep this short and to the point. Um, you see this big $15 contest? Don't play in it ever. Don't ever play in it unless you got a huge bankroll and you can stand to lose, you know, 2200 bucks tonight, do it. But go put 150 lineups in it and you'll blow through your money very quickly doing that. This 222. Oh, it's much better, right? No, it's not. It's still 25% to first and uh you can still uh, the pros can still put 60 lineups in it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go play in tournaments where you get to enter the same number of lineups as everybody else. Let me just go ahead and tell you. A reasonable number for most people watching this right here is this $3.20 max or this $1.20 max. Because A, you can get in it for either 60 bucks or 20 bucks, and you're playing the same number of lineups, and these payout structures are delicious. 10% of all the price pool goes to first as opposed to 25 to 33%. 10% of that goes to 10th. This is what we want to see. This is the nuts. Okay? And if you if you don't want to play 20 lineups, you're a one lineup kind of guy, I get it. Go play single entries. Look, you go play the $5 flea flicker, 25% to first, but just right below it, the $5 single entry, only 15% to first. DraftKings is catching on. They are learning that people want better contest structures. So they are starting to make their three maxes, their single entries, their 20 maxes. They're starting to make them flatter payout structures. Those are better. So if you hit a good lineup, you're still very, very live to get a real payout even if you don't win the GPP. So stick to your single entries, stick to your 20 maxes, and look for flatter payout structures. That's it. That's it. That's all you got. Just do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll say it every fucking show. It's what I do. Uh, I'm here to help you. And if that's the place we gotta help, that's the place we gotta help. Um, okay. Hey, down in the description, I, I guess I accidentally clicked out of it. Uh, we, I have a contest. You, it's completely free to get in. It's for the week long. As you can see, here's the results from last week. My dude, Red Gold Super Bowl uh, won. So he's going to be making a free million maker contest with me. No strings attached. Just hop in. It's a free contest. It's down there. My dude, Soda Kid 80, uh, got second place. He's getting a free month on my Discord. Um, if you want to be in it, just go hop in. It's right down in the description of the video. I, <laughs> you don't have to attach your email or any weird shit like that. It's just a fun way to grow the community. So completely free if you win you get to make a 20 dollar millionaire maker ticket that i will make with you we'll make it together i'll pay for it we'll split the profits 50 50 it's a pretty sweet deal so hop in there if that interests you uh i, I that i'm going to tout it on every show hey by the way i'm almost to 5,000 followers uh between twitter and youtube if you'd help me get there i'd really appreciate it go drop a like or a sub maybe tell a friend about me and when i do i'm going to be doing a bunch of hundred dollar giveaways to celebrate getting to 5,000 followers in less than six months what the fuck is life but let's get to why you're really here. You were here for uh, breaking down the slate. If you don't know, this game has a 45-point total. Uh, Cleveland is a three-and-a-half-point dog at home, which I guess if we're betting, you, tip you typically always want to take the dog at home. Uh, the big news for tonight is our boy uh, Jamar Chase is out, which really is going to affect the usage uh, specifically for the Bengals and maybe to a lesser extent could impact the flow of the game. The big news for the Browns is David Njoku is out. It does appear as though Favor Brown is probably going to play, but something worth monitoring. So that's our big injuries, right? And when there's injuries in football, especially to stars like Chase and to a lesser extent Njoku, uh, you, you, you just got to ask yourself one question. Where does that usage go, right? And uh, I think trying to figure out where Jamar Chase and Najoku's usage go is the key to unlocking the slate tonight. This site right here, we're going to go. It, we're on Run the Sims. If you want to check them out, it's uh, it's the best tool assisted site out there. So we've ran the Sims, right? We got their ownership here, their flex and their captain ownership. So you can see T. Higgins is coming in at roughly 68% ownership tonight, right? But he's showing up in the optimal 65% of the time. So he's actually a negative leverage play, meaning that he will be more owned than he is likely to show up in the optimal. But a 65% uh, optimal rate is still pretty insane, right? So to, to, to just completely fade everybody that's a negative total leverage, I think 
think you're missing the point. What you got to do is you got to pick your battles and you got to commit to the guys that you're going to commit to. If you're going to play T. Higgins, that makes all the sense. He's the best play on the slate, but you need to get him in probably 80 to 90 percent of your lineups to really have any leverage on him, right? So uh, I, I would go, I would go really low on T. Higgins, or I'd get him in almost every mother father lineup. That's what I would do. All right, so T. Higgins at 8000 is dramatically underpriced. They clearly did not adjust his pricing once the news that uh, uh, Jamar Chase was going to be out, and so we have to ask ourselves, when Chase is out, does that mean that the usage just dr directly goes to the, the number two receiver on the team, T. Higgins? Well, logic would dictate that it would, but let me just go ahead and throw at you something else. Let's think outside the box. That's Jamar Chase has a lot of usage, right? He gets a lot of targets, a lot of yards, a lot of receptions. And so because of that, maybe his usage will go to T. Higgins, but only part of it, right? Maybe the real value is it opens up Tyler Boyd. Now he'll be on the field in almost every two wide receiver set as opposed to just the three wide receiver sets. So this would seem to really bump up his value. But I want to get a little I want to get a little tricky with you. What if I told you that maybe Jamar Chase being out doesn't open up value with the wide receiver spot, but it opens up value at the tight end spot. Maybe it's Hayden Hurst, right? Hayden Hurst has been getting more and more involved with the Bengals, and he makes a lot of sense to me to gobble up a lot of that usage. He's on the field almost every play. He runs tons of routes, and he's actually a pretty damn good tight end. But if you really, really want to get tricky, what if I told you that maybe the Bengals decide with their best wide receiver out, arguably the best player on their football team, they're going to run the ball more or throw more short dump offs to Mixon? right? They, they don't have their big guy to extend the field. A lot more dump offs, a lot more screens to mix in. Mix in at 9,400 seems underpriced in a game where the, where the Bengals are favored and will likely be in a favorable script for him. There is a chance that some of that usage from Jamar Chase does get passed off to Mixon, right? Yes, Mixon will not be lined out out wide running those deep routes like uh, Jamar Chase does, but those passes have to go somewhere, right? Those plays have to go somewhere and maybe they pass the ball less, which means more carries for Joe Mixon. Um, now they're inside the five instead of throwing a fade in the corner to chase. Maybe they just run the ball with Mixon. So to me, really trying to figure out where that usage is going to go is key. I would encourage you to not just take the obvious free squares and say that it's going to be Higgins and it's going to be uh, 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 Tyler Boyd. Maybe you get more creative and say that that usage goes indirectly to, to Hurst and to Mixon. And if you really want one more option to consider, Mike Thomas will be on the field. So and he'll probably be the new Tyler Board. He'll he'll be that third wide receiver that gets to see the field. So if you want to play a punt option tonight, you got to remember rule number one. If you're going to play a punt, they need to be on the field. Because if you're not on the field, you can't fucking score points. Mike Thomas will probably be on the field. I would guess he runs somewhere around 20 routes tonight. Maybe you pray he gets five targets and four catches and he falls into the box and you're dancing in the streets naked, right? Uh, I, I personally don't love that play, but he is the best punt play down there tonight, right? Going over to the Browns. Oh, and uh, on this note, I guess we should talk about Joe Burrow. I actually think Joe Burrow is way overpriced. There's so many good players on the on the uh, uh, for the on this um, sc on this game tonight in this slate. That's the fucking word I'm looking for. It's still early. Leave me alone. All right. Joe Burrow is coming in as the n biggest negative leverage play. Part of that has to do with his salary. Part of it has to do with him missing his. Uh, best target but most of it is there's just so many other good options that can get there so joe burrow to me would probably be the one guy i would be wanting to get the least exposure to because there is a many ways that higgins and mixon can get there and burrow doesn't right and so because of that joe burrow at eleven thousand four hundred, i'd rather not eat that salary i'd rather just not eat that salary um and so I, i'm not interested in that matter of fact my favorite build tonight and i said this last monday night football most people are going to be playing four two uh, four two Bengal stacks. Uh, some will be playing five one Bengals or excuse me, yeah, Bengal stacks. And then uh, most people will be playing three three. So right there, if you just want to be different and still play the same guys that everybody else is playing, but do it different, go play a four two Browns. And I said this last week. I said go play a four two Bears or a five one Bears, and ended up being the nuts, right? So this is a way that you can get different, not by the players you choose, but just how you construct your roster. If you like the Browns tonight, which I do, give me four Browns and then run it back with your two Bengals, or five Browns and run it back with one Bengal, right? An onslaught is what we call that right i really like that build tonight just because more than anything right there you've already have a different lineup than 90 percent of people in the tournament so consider that also consider the script that you think it's going to be if you think this is maybe i think most people are going to play the script that the Bengals are going to be ahead but why don't you play a script maybe that you consider that the the browns are ahead and they're going to be running the ball and the Bengals are going to be passing it so you want two Bengals pass catchers maybe you double stack hunt and chubb 
something like that, right? It's all about the script, but make sure you put players in your script that make sense, okay? If you're playing a script that the Browns are going to be ahead and going to be controlling the game, you don't want to be playing the Bengals defense, right? That just doesn't make a lot of sense in that script. If you're playing uh, 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 if you're playing a script that the, that the Bengals are going to get way out ahead, well, then I don't really like Nick Chubb in that build, right? Because he's probably not going to get fewer carries if they're throwing the ball around. Kareem Hunt does tend to get more of the pass receptions. All right. So there's your scripts. There's your Bengals. Let's talk real quick about the Browns. Uh, with the Browns, uh, Nick Chubb is going to be under-owned, which is crazy because Nick Chubb is like a 35-point monster or he gets 12. So you're going to have to decide, is this going to be a Nick Chubb game? And the answer to that is simple. What kind of game script do you think it's going to be? If you think the Browns are going to be in this game and running the ball and going to be playing from ahead, Nick Chubb's the nuts play. But if you're playing where most people are going to be, that it could shoot out or that that it uh, is going to be a, a low-scoring game, well, then maybe Nick Chubb's not the play. Jacoby Brissett at 9,200, it's always nice to get a quarterback in the 9,000s. It just They fit so well in your lineup. They have such safe floors. Um, Jacoby Brissett is a live play, right? Especially if you think the Browns are going to be playing from behind like most people will in the script. And the best part about Jacoby Brissett is he is super affordable to stack because his two main options are, well, his top three options are Amari Cooper, uh, Harrison Bryant, because if you don't know, Najoku's out. So we're going to assume Harrison Bryant is going to soak that up. And probably my favorite play on the slate is Donovan Peoples-Jones, who's been getting tons of targets, is a great athlete, and Jacoby Brissett has already shown that he likes to throw the ball to this guy. He gets red zone targets. He gets deep targets. So my favorite play on the slate is, is DPJ. Now, if they get ahead, the Browns are playing from ahead. Maybe he only gets four targets the whole game. They're not chunking it down the field, right? But I feel like he is almost script-proof. So give me some DPJ. Give me some Amari Cooper. Give me a Jacoby Brissett. And then maybe even throw in a Kareem Hunt or a Nick Chubb. Run it back with your two favorite Bengals. That right there will be a lineup that 95% of people won't build because they're not going to be playing the underdogs in a 4-2 onslaught or a 5-1 onslaught. Uh, it's, and by the way, I also think DPJ is uh, captain viable too, right? I don't, th I don't think I'm going to be putting Harrison Bryant in my captain. I could see it, uh, but I don't think I'm going to get there. If I'm going to punt at uh, captain and take a chance to try to save some money to cram in more studs into my lineup, I'm probably going DPJ. Uh, you could probably get me on board for, you could definitely get me on board for Amari Cooper, Tyler Boyd, and T. Higgins and Joe Mixon, right? But uh, Burrow, Chubb, Brissett, they just cost so much versus their upside. I don't love those guys as the captain because they eat up so much of your salary that they're going to make you punt once or twice. The last thing we always talk about, kickers and defenses. Kickers and defenses are always viable at showdown, specifically if they fit your script. If you think this game is going to be 13 to 9, well, then you better be playing some shit out of some kickers and some defenses, right? Probably be in that in that script, you probably play one or both kickers, one or both defenses, and you go stack it with the two studs that would get it done. In low-scoring games, uh, wide receivers do tend to have a little bit of an advantage because simply they're getting a full point per PPR. So Higgins could get there with, you know, in a low-scoring game, he could have eight catches for 103 yards and no touchdowns and those what would that be 18 21.3 points is going to be the nuts uh in that spot even though he didn't get a touchdown uh, and that's a very that's a very reasonable uh stat line that he could get in a game like this uh if you want any more punts uh if, if you're one of those guys that likes to play the punt i've already told you about mike thomas uh, Samaj P. Ryan, he gets some third down action, but at 4,800, we can't call that a punt. The other one I would really consider is David Bell from Cleveland. As you can see, him, uh, he's probably going to be getting most of the third down work. He ran nearly all the routes last week. Um, but, you know, Cleveland's not a team that likes to spread it out and doesn't run a lot of uh, three wide receiver stuff. Um, and if Pharaoh Brown is playing, then they also like to run a lot of uh, too tight. So that fades David, phases David Bell out a little bit, but. You know, if you're looking for a punt, you're looking for a punt. If Pharaoh Brown is um, is active, he's probably the best $200 play down there. Simply for one reason is the Browns love their tight ends; they love to run them. Pharaoh Brown is a big old studly athlete. Somebody that uh, if if you have you know you got five guys and you absolutely love it and you need a $200 guy down there at the bottom, go ahead and give me uh, go ahead and give me Pharaoh Brown. I don't love it, and you need to make sure that he's active because we still don't have word. He's probably going to be one of those guys we're going to have to wait 90 minutes before. Um, 
kickoff, which is when I will be doing my stream specifically for my Discord. If you're interested in my Discord, it is connected right here through my Patreon. We're, we're finally over 300 people growing every week. Uh, come over there. I do way more content for them. You can support the cause. Uh, you can get more content. And uh, more than anything, I just it, it's a great community of people. It's There's no assholes over there. It's pretty fun. So uh, come check that out. Also, go give me a follow on Twitter. As I told you, we are almost to uh, 5,000 between Twitter and YouTube. And I'm going to be doing a big giveaway when we do that. Make sure to tell a friend about me and uh i i would appreciate it man i hope you've been uh enjoying this show i hope you've been enjoying the content i hope you keep coming back once again here's my schedule feel free to dm me on twitter i'm not one of those mother fathers that takes myself too serious i will give you a thoughtful response i will reply i'm not gonna be like i'm too busy to talk to you peasants like so many of these other fucking slap dicks all right man i hope you've enjoyed this show i hope you kick some ass tonight and i hope you share those screenshots with me but most importantly i hope you enjoy this outro <laughs>